Improving in Valorant is honestly easy. However, what's even easier to get stuck into are bad habits, horrible mindsets, and a near 50% win rate paired with improvement at a snail's pace. When it comes to Valorant, improving quickly is all about having the right ideas, using effective techniques, and knowing what to work on. But the problem is no one bothers to tell you these techniques, and it's not like you could find them in the tutorial. So if you really want to get better, how should you go about it? Don't worry, as in today's video, I'll be going over three bits of advice that if you implement into your gameplay, you'll be sure to see success with. And and real quick before the video, if you're currently below Radiant and you're looking for the quickest way to improve, I have a crazy offer for you. My team of Radiant coaches and I can help you with our 10 week premium coaching program that offers a 500 RR rank up guarantee or your money back. That's right. If you don't see results with our coaching, you don't pay. Some of our coaches include Milan, the analyst on Ascend when they won champs in 2021, and Screwface, the sixth man on EG when they won champs in 2023. To find out more and see if we'd be a good fit, use the link in the description below to book a free strategy call. And hurry, because we maxed out all the spots for our previous season and we've just opened up 60 more spots. Already 31 spots have been taken in the first week, so don't wait. We all love winning. Let's be honest, no one hops into a Valorant game hoping to lose. However, this kind of mindset is also something that can really hold you back. Allow me to explain. First things first, in order to win games, we need to be better, or at the very least, play better than your opponents. A bit of a no-brainer perhaps, but the more important question is how do we actually achieve that? Well, there's two main ways, just play. <laughs> or what we'll talk about in this video, actively trying to improve. With the first method, there's a big caveat in that you don't expect to improve very quickly, meaning that it'll be very likely that you'll be pushed by the MMR system to that perfect 50% win rate, or even see yourself get completely heart stuck. If you're fine with that and don't really care about ranking up or getting better quickly, that's perfectly fine, and you do you. But if you're not okay with that, you have no other choice than to go with option two, which is actively trying to improve. This is because in order to have a higher than 50% win rate, you need to be constantly improving, even at a much faster rate than most players. If you're improving too slowly, your MMR will have plenty of time to adjust, and as you win more games, the matchmaker will just start putting you against harder and harder opponents to keep you at that balanced 50% win rate. So why is it important to avoid getting too focused on winning? Well, I'm sure you've heard someone say result-oriented thinking is bad before, but let's go into a bit more detail on that. Imagine a big weakness of yours is using the operator. The most effective way to go about winning any particular game in that case is to avoid using using the weapon altogether. But naturally, that's not how you're going to fix that weakness. If anything, it's actually going to make it worse, as the more you don't use it, the more anxious you get about using the gun. If you instead spend some games or even a week or two worth of games on trying to use the op as much as possible, that's going to tank your win rate a bit. There's no way around it, but it'll also make you a better op player, which is something that in the long run might actually benefit you a lot. But there's more to it. I'm sure you've experienced having toxic teammates or even ones that lose on purpose. If you're super focused on achieving a rank and feel the only way to get there is by winning as many games as possible, you you'll get extremely frustrated. Your goal is to win the game, and the people who are supposed to be helping you achieve that are instead actively going out of the way to hurt your odds. When you're supposed to be playing a team game, it feels more like a 1v9. And though it's commonly used as a bad excuse, in cases like these, there might legitimately be nothing you can do to avoid that loss. In other words, this awfully unfun game you just had was a complete waste of time or even a sizable setback from the goals you were trying so hard to achieve. But what if you had a different mindset? What if you are just able to let go of the idea that that winning is the only way forward. Well, it would be quite different. Just because your teammate is a terrible team player that is trying their hardest to lose you the game does not mean you're unable to practice your operator. If your goal is not to win, but instead to improve, you immediately start to become a lot less dependent on what your teammates are doing, how they are behaving, or even what the outcome of the game is. Of course, you still want to win and you should always try to achieve that, but we also realize that if we eventually want to win more than 50% of our games, we need to be focused on our own skills and not on the behavior of the players we only ever come Come across once or twice in our lifetime. The first step to improving is therefore letting go of winning. Though that might be easier said than done, it's important to try and remember that, as without recognizing it, it's easy to get stuck and improvement will slow down. The reason, as paradoxical as it might seem, is that the moment you let go of wins and losses and how they impact your rank, the more you'll actually start to see yourself ranking up as you're now focused on more productive things. But now you might wonder, what do we do after we make that change of mindset? What does playing to improve actually look like? That's a good question. Since, especially if you have been stuck in the mindset of trying to win every game, it'll be a big change of pace. I tried to hint at it a bit already, but one of the most important things you can do is to take things one step at a time and keep your focus on that one specific aspect until you're done working on it. I'm willing to bet that if one of your friends came up to you and told you that they just decided to start seven different companies,
companies and are planning to try and make them all work out, you would think that's a pretty bad idea. A single person only has so much bandwidth and trying to balance so many responsibilities at once is just not really possible. The same concept goes for Valorant as well. If your goal is to just quote unquote get better and your plan to achieve that is by doing your best to do everything as well as possible, then you're going to be in for a pretty rough ride. Focusing on a more specific thing, like playing the operator for example, helps you by giving you something that's a lot more narrow to think about during the game and it also means you can more closely monitor what things do work and don't work well. Of course, the operator example is not the only one. If you play race, maybe working on the way you race satchel is a point you can improve on. If you play sky, maybe it's the way you flash or dog for your teammates. There's a lot of things you might want to work on, but as a general rule, the more specific it is, the better as you want to avoid getting overwhelmed. Remember that you're not trying to improve at everything all at once. Instead, you're trying to work on one little thing each time so that soon enough when you look back, you'll find that the complete package has improved substantially. In the spirit of focusing on specific things, Keeping quite a small agent pool is also generally a good idea. To be flexible, it's usually a good idea to learn more than one role, but even within your favorite role, it's not so bad if you don't play every agent. Relating it back to the analogy from earlier, the more agents you play, the more companies you're trying to run simultaneously. And to add on to that, the more roles and styles of agents you play, the more various sectors your companies might be in. Nevertheless, even if you decide to play all 24 agents, always try to focus on one thing at a time. That way, even if your teammates are trolling, your enemies are smurfing, and you're bound to lose the game, you're still able to have some level of fun and extract value by focusing on your goal for the game. In other words, while your teammates leave that game overflowing with tilt, you leave it as a better player. Finally, I want to mention something that may not be the most fun thing to hear, but is still extremely important, and that's try not to take shortcuts. Shortcuts are extremely appealing in that they seem like an easy way to achieve your goals without putting in as much effort. But in Valorant, they often lead to bad habits or result in you missing key skills that will become apparent you actually needed sooner rather than later. In the context of Valorant, one of those shortcuts might be overusing weapons like the Odin or the Judge. Sure, you might realize the average gold player has no idea how to counter them, but even if you climb because of the weapon, you won't be a much better player. If you want to get good at anything, it's important to get comfortable being a bit uncomfortable. If your sheriff really needs some work, don't avoid buying the weapon, but instead use it as one of your specific points of improvement and work on it until it becomes a strength. Just like how you shouldn't be focused on winning if you want to rank up, you don't want to look for shortcuts. Your goal should always be to improve at specific things until you're at a level where you can effortlessly climb to the next rank. If it feels like you need to really grind in order to get a rank up, you should probably focus your energy on a weakness of your gameplay instead of tirelessly spamming hours into ranked games. Your base has to be really strong if you want to build a tall tower. So don't try to skip over things by taking shortcuts. It'll come back to bite you once your tower comes crashing down. All right, that should be it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you'd like more tips in the future and see you in the next one. Bye.